ectopic pregnancy occurs when the fertilized ovum implants outside the endometrial lining of the uterus. Death, infertility and recurrent ectopic pregnancy are possible sequelae. The risk factor for ectopic pregnancy are previous ectopic pregnancy, treatment for infertility, for example in vitro fertilization, prior pelvic infection like PID and ruptured appendix, prior tubal surgery like tubal ligation, advanced maternal age. In women with an intrauterine device, the risk for ectopic pregnancy is lower than the general population. However, in the rare event that a pregnancy occurs with IUD present, the risk for ectopic pregnancy is increased. That means, if a woman have intrauterine device in C2, then there is increased risk of ectopic pregnancy if pregnancy occur. So the overall risk for the ectopic pregnancy is lower than the general population in case of the IUD in C2. The fertilized ovum can implant anywhere along the path of the migration or in the abdominal cavity. Most ectopic pregnancies are tubal in 98% of cases and remaining 2% implant on cervix, ovary or elsewhere in the abdomen. The most common tubal ectopic site is ampullary region. 78% of cases occur there. In isthmus there is 12%. In infundibular or the fimbrial region there is 6% and interstitial or the cornual is 2%. The clinical presentation of a patient with ectopic pregnancy depend on the gestational age, site of implantation and the extent of hemorrhage. Before rupture, the signs and the symptoms are often subtle. Classical clinical sign of impending rupture or ruptured tubal pregnancy include abdominal or pelvic pain, delayed menstruation, and vaginal bleeding. Vaginal bleeding occurs from the breakdown and shedding of the decidual lining of the uterine wall, which is probably associated with the decreased hormone production by the corpus luteum and inadequate human chorionic gonadotropin production by the ectopic trophoblast. Pain often precedes vaginal bleeding. Patient with hemorrhage with or without tubal rupture may experience dizziness or syncope may have urge to defecate because of the effect of blood in the pouch of Douglas and may have shoulder pain from the diaphragmatic irritation by intra-abdominal blood. Physical findings include abdominal tenderness with or without rebound, uterus that is smaller than the expected for deaths, a tender adnexal mass, bulging pouch of Douglas suggests the hemoperitoneum. With significant hemorrhage, there may be sign of shock. But some patient may appear hemodynamically stable despite a hemiperitoneal volume of 1 liter to 1.5 liter of blood. Ectopic pregnancy should be excluded in any patient who has pelvic pain and the positive pregnancy test. Pregnancy of unknown location exists when HCG is positive but the site of implantation has not yet been determined. Ultrasonography can reliably confirm the presence of intrauterine pregnancy. Transvaginal sonography is the current modality of choice. A gestational sac with a yolk sac is the earliest confirmation of the intrauterine pregnancy. Unfortunately, ultrasonographic visualization of the ectopic pregnancy has poor sensitivity. Ultrasonographic visualization of an adnexal mass and the free fluid with absence of intrauterine pregnancy is specific for the ectopic pregnancy. There may we get hyperechoic ring around the gestational sac in adnexal region by USG that is called the bezel sign. If concern exists for ectopic pregnancy, then serial HCG measurement spaced 48 hours apart can help clarify the viability of the pregnancy regardless of the location. For a viable pregnancy, the increased HCG over 48 hours should be at least 53%. A decrease in the HCG by at least 10% suggests a non-viable pregnancy. Serial HCG measurement and the transvaginal sonography along with symptoms are considered when determining viability versus non-viability of the pregnancy of unknown location. Management of ectopic pregnancy depends upon the hemodynamic stability of the patient and the location of the pregnancy. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable, then immediate laparotomy should be done. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, 
एंड देयर इज अनरप्चर्ड ट्यूबल एक्टोपिक प्रेगनेंसी देन मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन फॉर एक्टोपिक प्रेगनेंसी आर एक्सपेक्टेंट मेडिकल एंड सर्जिकल Choice depends on the activity of the ectopic pregnancy, which is determined by the symptoms and diagnostic findings. Expectant management is preferred in very less active ectopic pregnancy or pregnancy of unknown location with no symptoms. An HCG less than 1,500 milli international unit per ml plateauing trend in the HCG values. For expectant management, the patient should be hospitalized. There is strict monitoring of the clinical symptoms and daily hemoglobin estimation should be done. Serum beta HCG monitoring should be continued until its value becomes less than 10 unit per liter. TBS should be done twice a week. Spontaneous resolution occurs in 72% of cases. Remaining cases need laparoscopic interventions. Usually it takes 4 to 46 days for total resolution. Mean duration is 20 days. Medical management with methotrexate is preferred option in less active ectopic pregnancy. Less active ectopic pregnancy is characterized by HCG less than 5000 and no fetal cardiac activity in an asymptomatic woman who is hemodynamically stable. Methotrexate a folate antagonist interrupts DNA synthesis and thus inhibits the growth of the trophoblastic cells. It can be administered intramuscularly in one or more injections to a woman who screen negative for kidney liver and the hematologic disease from day 4 to day 7 after methotrexate treatment a decrease in the hcg level of 15% must be present to considered the treatment successful otherwise repeat methotrexate treatment or the surgical interventions is required other than methotrexate we can also use the actinomycin d Surgically administered medical treatment aimed at trophoblastic destruction without systemic side effect. Here we inject the trophotoxic substance into the ectopic pregnancy sac or into the affected tube by laparoscopy or USG guided. The drugs used are methotrexate, potassium chloride. Surgical management depend on the location of the pregnancy, the hemodynamic stability of the patient, the availability of the equipment and the surgeon's expertise. Most often laparoscopy is preferred to confirm the diagnosis by the locating ectopic pregnancy then proceeding with treatment. For tubal ectopic pregnancies a laparotomy is indicated if the surgeon is not trained in the operative laparoscopy. Laparoscopic removal is anticipated to be difficult like in case of the tube diameter greater than 6 cm or an interstitial location of the ectopic pregnancy there is uncontrolled bleeding. Laparotomy should be performed if there is hemodynamic instability. These cases often require a partial or total selfingectomy. Partial cervical cesarean scar and the abdominal ectopic pregnancies as well as early placenta accreta may present significant diagnostic and the therapeutic challenges resulting in delayed of diagnosis and treatment. Interstitial pregnancy often goes unrecognized and may manifest as uterine wall rupture. massive hemorrhage and shock conservative surgery corneal resection may be attempted but hysterectomy may be required if, if the uterine damage is severe cervical pregnancy can result in massive hemorrhage because of the inability of the cervix to contract more current management option that are more likely to maintain fertility include methotrexate therapy local excision Arcles and tamponade ligation of the hypogastric arteries or the cervical branches of the uterine artery angiographic embolization of the uterine arteries followed by dilatation and the curettage procedure cesarean scar pregnancy occurs when the gestational sac implants in the uterine scar defect at the site of the previous cesarean delivery cesarean scar pregnancy has a high complication rate Scar implantation result in an increased risk for early uterine rupture and severe hemorrhage at delivery. Growth into the myometrium may lead to eventual rupture and bleeding in the first trimester. Prompt surgical intervention is preferred over the medical management in this situation. Abdominal pregnancy is defined as implantation in the peritoneal cavity not including the fallopian tubes, ovaries or the ligaments. and is associated with the high incidence of maternal morbidity and the fetal demise 
Diagnosis of abdominal pregnancy can be difficult. Abdominal pain, vaginal bleeding, symptoms consistent with the partial bowel obstruction, shock or death may be the first indication for unusual type of pregnancy. Ultrasonography is useful but may miss the diagnosis in more than 50% of the cases. MRI may prove to be a more sensitive diagnostic tool. If an extrauterine pregnancy is suspected in the early gestational age, laparoscopy can be used to diagnose and remove the gestational product. Management of advanced extrauterine pregnancy consists of the laparotomy and the delivery of the fetus. Once the fetus is delivered, management of the placenta is controversial. Removal of the placenta is associated with the massive hemorrhage, prolonged and the complicated surgery. A decision to leave the placenta in situ results in the high risk for the infectious morbidity. Patient with an unruptured tubal pregnancy usually have normal intravascular volume, minimal bleeding before and during surgery and the low anesthetic and the surgical risk. Although most patients may prefer general anesthesia, neuroaxial anesthesia with an upper sensory level up to at least T4 may be an alternative in selected patients. Shoulder pain from diaphragmatic irritation may occur and can be treated with intravenous analgesic fentanyl 1 to 2 microgram per kg. A ruptured ectopic pregnancy may be associated with significant preoperative blood loss but estimation of the extent of this this is difficult because young women may have normal blood pressure despite of marked reduction in the circulatory blood volume. General anesthesia with preparation for hemorrhage is preferred if significant blood loss has occurred like in the ruptured tubal pregnancy or is, or is likely to occur that seen in the cervical, interstitial, cornual, caesarean scar or abdominal ectopic pregnancies. Intraoperative autologous blood transfusion can be used. Subarachnoid block can be given with small gauge pencil tip spinal needle with hyperbaric bupivacan 12 mg with fentanyl 10 to 25 microgram to achieve T4 sensory level. Epidural anesthesia can also be given. Placement of the mid lumbar epidural needle and the catheter. Lignocin 2% with adrenaline 5 microgram per ml. 1 is to 2 lakhs dilution approximately 20 ml. And the fentanyl 100. The step wise fluid resuscitation strategy is establish large bore intravenous infusion assess minimum 218 gauge. Give 1 liter crystalloid rapidly. Ringer lactate preferably or normal saline. Target systolic blood pressure more than 90 mm per g and heart rate less than 120 beats per minute. Repeat crystalloid 1 liter or colloid like Voluven 500 ml if hemodynamic target is not attained. If hemoglobin is less than should be administered pre induction. If systolic blood pressure less than 90 mm per g after fluid correction, initiate adrenaline infusion and expedite surgery. Blood typing and the antibody screening must be done. Aspiration prophylaxis should be maintained if patient has a full stomach. Routine non-invasive monitors must be attached. ECG, non-invasive blood pressure monitor, pulse oximeter, temperature probe. Large bore peripheral intravenous catheter should be done. Urinary catheterization must be done. If major bleeding has occurred or is expected to occur, then two intravenous catheters must be used. Blood should be arranged before. Consideration of the invasive hemodynamic monitoring like the arterial catheter, central venous catheter may be recorded. For general anesthesia, rapid sequence induction with the required pressure if the patient has full stomach. Induction may be done with the propofol or the thiopentone. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable, then Etomidate is preferred. Ketamine may also be used. Ketamine can be administered as a sole anesthetic agent. Thus induction that means 2 mg per kg IV can be followed by maintenance repeated bolus of 1 mg per kg or infusion at the rate of 4 mg per kg per hour. Anesthesia is maintained with volatile or the intravenous anesthetic agents. Reversal of the neuromuscular blockade and the extubation done when the patient is awake and they respond to the verbal commands.